Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we're tackling an important clinical question. In patients with a recent cardiovascular event, such as a stroke or myocardial infarction, how does clopidogrel compare to aspirin in the secondary prevention of stroke, myocardial infarction, and cardiovascular death? Let's dive in. First, the bottom line, clopidogrel has been shown to reduce cardiovascular outcomes more effectively than aspirin when used as secondary prevention among patients with a prior stroke or myocardial infarction. Prior studies demonstrated that both aspirin and ticlopidine independently reduce the risk of stroke, myocardial infarction, and cardiovascular death, with ticlopidine having a slight advantage. The CAPRI trial aimed to evaluate whether clopidogrel, a drug similar to ticlopidine, would compare favorably to aspirin using similar outcome measures. Let's take a closer look at the design of the CAPRI trial. This was a multi-center, double-blind, parallel group, randomized, controlled trial. It included 19,185 patients, with 9,599 on clopidogrel and 9,586 on aspirin. Enrollment was from March 1992 to February 1995, with a mean follow-up of 1.9 years. The trial aimed to provide robust data on the efficacy and safety of clopidogrel compared to aspirin. Who were the patients included in this study? Patients with recent cardiovascular events like ischemic stroke, myocardial infarction, or symptomatic peripheral arterial disease were enrolled. Specific inclusion and exclusion criteria ensured appropriate patient selection, making the results applicable to a broad range of patients with similar conditions. Interventions in the CAPRI trial included patients being randomized to either clopidogrel 75 mg daily or aspirin 325 mg daily. Regular follow-ups were conducted to monitor their progress and assess the outcomes. This rigorous approach ensured that the data collected was both reliable and relevant to clinical practice. Now let's talk outcomes. Comparisons were made between clopidogrel and aspirin on various primary and secondary outcomes. Primary outcomes included ischemic stroke, myocardial infarction, or cardiovascular death. Secondary outcomes included ischemic stroke, myocardial infarction, amputation, or cardiovascular death, among others. In the CAPRI trial, clopidogrel reduced the risk of cardiovascular events by 9% compared to aspirin without an increase in bleeding events. Adverse events were also a key consideration. The study found the following differences between the two drugs. Rash and diarrhea were more common with clopidogrel, while gastrointestinal complaints and bleeding were more common with aspirin. These findings are crucial for clinicians when considering the overall safety profile of these medications. Every study has its criticisms. For Capri, one major point of contention was the use of composite primary endpoints. While some argue that these may not be statistically rigorous, they are of great importance from a patient perspective, encompassing all efficacy endpoints rather than a single event type. This approach provides a more comprehensive view of the drug's impact. Finally, it's important to note that the CAPRI trial was funded by Sanofi and Bristol-Myers Squibb. For those interested in diving deeper, here are some further readings and references. Kernan W.N. et al., Guidelines for the Prevention of Stroke, Albers G.W., Choice of Endpoints in Antiplatelet Trials, Algra A. Van Geen J. Is Clopidogrel Superior to Aspirin in Secondary Prevention? Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content on medical research and clinical guidelines. Until next time, stay informed and take care.